Scoring full marks and becoming the school topper have been benchmarks for students in our country for years. Do the top scores in schools mean success in the future career for students? The Indian Express has tracked down a generation of school toppers to see where they are and what they do now. Over the past four months, we spoke to 86 men and women from across India and eight other countries who stood first in class 10 and 12 board exams from 1996 to 2015. For the study, we spoke to toppers who graduated from schools affiliated with the Council for the Indian School Certificate Examinations and the Central Board of Secondary Education. Among the toppers, 51 were men, which totals to 59%, while the remaining 35 were women. Out of them, 60 are employed in high-paying jobs in sectors like IT, finance and medicine. Interestingly, more than half of these bright minds are currently abroad, either pursuing advanced degrees or working. Here is what the toppers have to say about the Indian education system. The best part I felt about education in the US was uh, we were always uh, encouraged to think outside the box. We were always, always encouraged to challenge um, your teacher, which often is uh, can, kind of discouraged, uh, I would say, in a traditional um, Indian setting. This way of challenging, this way of uh, kind of constructive criticism um, of uh, somebody you would typically think is your senior, is your elder and knows much better. That really uh, felt like transformational to me. So it, it unlocks, it almost unlocks a part of your brain where you can, you can now say that, oh my God, like, this is possible. Like, I can do this. I can have this back and forth uh, with my advisor, with my uh, peers um, who have excelled in this field and like, gain something constructive out of it. There's a lot, of, lot more optionality um, in choosing one subject and majors um, in the US or, or generally abroad. For example, um, in India, for example, a lot of people just choose their major in, you know, 11th standard. Do you want to do bio? Do you want to do math? Do you want to do engineering or medicine? Um, and then for the JE, for example, um, as I was applying to the IITs to get in, I had to choose what I wanted to major in, which was electrical engineering. Um, in the US, on the other hand, a lot of students have um, a lot of freedom to go through many different kinds of subjects. Everything from, you know, aeronautical engineering to cognitive science to literature to psychology before they decide upon what to study. Um, and I feel like that is a great way to truly understand what people are passionate about um, without having to lock yourself into a major early on. I did my uh, undergrad in a four year program and doing a PhD in India would usually uh, need me to do a master's before I, before I applied to a PhD. Applying to the US helped me in directly getting into a PhD program without having to go through another application cycle. Generally, uh, funding for exper experimental uh, science at the you know at at the cutting edge is much lower in India compared to the U.S. So whenever the experiment experiments are not uh, well funded, that means physics just generally suffers. Even theorists will suffer. That students here actually, as part of the course curriculum, they got to work on some real world large systems. For example, in the software engineering course here, students were working on real world open source systems that is used by many companies here. And as part of that, they got to learn about how, how real world software works, how multiple engineers work together on building a big system. A major chunk of the toppers pursued engineering at the undergraduate level. And out of 38 engineering graduates who are employed, 34% work in unrelated sectors. I think mostly what we studied in engineering uh, doesn't really apply in the real world. Uh, I have felt that across the three plus jobs that I have done, you know, ever since passing out. Uh, at first, I was a software engineer for a for a year with a big tech firm. Uh, then I spent five years in a consulting firm and now I have been for three years working for a bank in Singapore. And uh, what I felt is there is a big difference in you know what is taught in the classrooms in engineering colleges in, in India versus what the industry really 
expense. Unfortunately, there is no direct role of whatever I studied in engineering uh, that I can apply in my current role. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there are skills like uh, there are skill sets which I have uh, gained uh, while preparing for engineering as well as during the engineering course, uh, like problem solving, analytical skills, which I put to use in my current. You now, most of the Indians they uh, do engineer engineering and then they figure out what they want to do in life. Um, I would say um, most of the people around me, including my uh, close relatives, friends, uh, seniors, everybody uh, who had done academically very well in standard 10 had chosen uh, this uh, engineering as a stream. Deeply ingrained that, you know, if you want to be successful, then that uh, engineering is like a stream that you should pursue. Uh, being from a relatively smaller town, I'm from Jamshedpur, you really know very little about the careers that are out there. At some point, one of my mentors really pointed that out to me that the hard truth is that in this country, some of the sharpest of your generation are going to end up in IITs. You might as well go there and, you know, any business that you do, it requires you to have like really good team. And IITs have that kind of ecosystem where you can explore ideas, where, you know, you have people like you who are interested in similar things, you can build something together. So I think for me, that was, it was not about studying engineering, which, you know, made me go into an IIT. It was more about uh, the people that I was going to meet there, uh, you know, which became the primary motivation. So in my second year of college, I figured uh, that there is something called design and design is not just about making things pretty, right? Design is about actually thinking through an experience and making products that people love. And I, I just felt like that was so much more aligned with, with my idea of what I wanted to do in life. I wanted to build products since like I was 15. So I think in the hindsight, if I had that kind of exposure uh, towards this field, I would have definitely pursued it. And uh, I'm still doing what is more aligned to design. So I would have learned it in a better ecosystem, but yeah, it is what it is. I think that the focus and the stress on memorization doesn't help anybody in the long run. Um, if you go out in the so-called real world, nobody asks you to memorize baseless facts or just like, random stuff in history and geography like you can google that stuff why would you memorize all of it there is i think that moving forward an education needs to be based in logical reasoning people understand things in so many different ways and our education system for a country of one of the largest populations in the world if we are trying to boil it all down to everybody just memorizing something i think we're shortchanging our students um because so many kids just don't learn like that. It's so stressful. The way we really learn here is like by positive uh, reinforcement, where like, you know, uh, people really appreciate the positive things about you. You know, you, uh, you know, you do understand your limitations that there are certain things you are better at than others. And, you know, you don't really get criticized for the things that you lag behind, but like, you know, you get really appreciated about the things that you bring to the table. And people really try to highlight that and uh, you know which i felt was kind of you know the a little bit uh, different back uh, back home where it's more kind of like you know by a negative reinforcement where you know people try to show what are your shortcomings and then like you know make you help you you know kind of improve on those and i feel like you know both both things have uh, you know different ways in which they can make you improve but i you know somehow related more with this uh, environment. I think the most important thing for me as a scientist now um, is the uh, is a science curriculum that we were exposed to in school uh, was very different from the actual reality of what science is. Um, in school, we were taught to really memorize long lists of facts, some of which were really sometimes very irrelevant. Whereas science really is um, is two things. One is a set of principles, foundational principles about how the world works, how the universe and how life works. Um, and I think understanding that would have been really important. For example, uh, I didn't learn about DNA and RNA and protein, fundamental building blocks of life. I haven't even heard of them any time in my school curriculum. Whereas, you know, look at what's happening in the world right now with the COVID pandemic, uh, with the vaccines that are being created made out of RNA. I think it is really important that fundamental basic school education equip every citizen to really understand these important aspects of life that are happening around us.